expect me to hand them back steel. <laughs> it is not an instructor they want. It is an alchemist. You, my friend, are in a world of tigers. And they will eat you alive if you are weak, if you hesitate, if you do not strike first. Here, you will learn to strike first and strike hard. For those combat holograms, they can do nothing to you. I, however, have a high-powered rifle and a streak of what some call sadism. I call a will to incentivize. You have potential, but we have no time to tease it out of you. Inside you is a power, an anima, you can draw on to make yourself stronger, faster, a more effective killer. It is the magic behind the magic bullet. The weapons you use will become an extension of yourself. They are the instruments through which your anima is made force. I want you to arm yourself and show me that force. We have an arsenal here. You can experiment with all of them if you please. But when you leave, you can only take one with you. You have an edge, my friend. And I am not interested in how or why you came to possess it. Only that you sharpen it to the best of your abilities. Nothing less. In the test chamber, you can do so in safety. Safe. Except from me. Now, let us begin. Hi folks, and welcome back to another Secret World Beta video. In this particular video, we'll retouch with my character, who is going through the combat training. Essentially, you come up to a point in your early pre-questing where you're given the opportunity to go ahead and decide what kind of weapon you want to pick and uh, basically take them on test runs. My prior character was using blood magic and he was using sword, so I'm going to go ahead and try chaos over here. And uh, we'll see what we can do. So when you first pick up a spell, it'll go ahead and uh, give you the focus which you're going to go ahead and want to equip. So let's equip all the rest of the gear first. Once the focus is equipped, then you'll be able to cast spells from that particular school. Okay, so Chaos starts with Hand of Change, which is your resource builder. Close range attack that does magical damage. And your resource dump is Call for Errors. Which is a burst attack that does damage and then does extra damage based on how many resources are built up. So we'll go ahead and look at the magic tree down here for chaos. You can see there's hand to change as your resource builder. There's entropy, which is your dump. Excuse me, entropy is a passive. Call for errors is your dump. And you've got a couple passives from entropy and paradigm shift. Over here we also have gnosis and escalation. Escalation will be a resource builder also and let's go ahead and take a look at elemental focus so you pick the quest then you have to pick up the uh, particular focus for it and we'll go ahead and re-equip the rest of the gear here and it looks like the resource builder is shock single target uh, attack that deals magic damage and the resource dump is combust which deals 204 magical damage the elemental resource cost is reduced by one when attacking hindered targets
So it looks like uh, the resource builder actually puts a dot. Alright, let's see what we can do over here with Elemental. There's Shock, Volatile Current, which uh, if you hit with Shock, it, there's the dot that we saw. Rapid Combustion reduces the activation time of Combust by a half a second. Over here we have Ignite and Mind Over Matter. Mind Over Matter says when I critically hit, the target also becomes afflicted. So we already have that apparently as a passive. And when you have AP, basically you have two categories of spill points that you can do. You have skill points, which is kind of like talents, basically. As you can see here, I have two, and I can choose to dump it in elemental, and I can either do the damage tree or support. The difference are damage will have a 25% to deal extra damage to enemies around the target, up to five of them support. When deploying any elemental manifestation ability, your defensive target deals more damage. So essentially like a party member will get a, a buff. And that's basically how all of the skill points go. If you were to look at uh, blades, which I used to use, you have the damage tree, which gives you two cuts, and you have survivability uh, that gains uh, percentage of the damage back as healing and if you take a look at something like shotgun you have damage and you have support whenever you deploy shotgun turret your defensive target takes less damage so that's kind of a uh, a shielding buff over there and that's basically how all of these items go as you can see damage support damage support there's damage and healing for assault rifle blood has healing and then there's your talismans, which is basically your gear. So yes, you do actually have to spend some kill skill points to get uh, better gear. So for now, we'll hold off on things like that. And we'll experiment with some of the other abilities around. So here are the magics. Blood does some damage. It also does a little bit of healing. And over here are the ranged weapons. So we'll pick up an assault rifle. And first we'll get the quest, then it'll go yellow, so we'll go ahead, pick it up, we'll equip everything. And let's take a look at what we have. We have the resource builder, which is safety off. Single target burst attack that hits four times, dealing damage. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Fallout games on this one. And you have Fire at Will, which consumes all the resources in a targeted area of attack. That's what T-A-O-E is, as compared to P-A-O-E, which is a point area of attack, which basically means around you. Comes up a lot with blades, where uh, a point one means everything around you. So there's your resource builder. And there's a big AOE. And we'll go ahead and see what these skills are like over here for ranged. Extra bullet, safety off, performs an additional hit, no contest. Whenever you apply hindered, your next hit is unavoidable. Anima shot, single target attack that deals damage. And you heal your defensive target for 30 and 8% of the damage dealt. So there's a little bit of healing there military code when an enemy dies with your assault rifle resource remaining you gain a beneficial effect that causes your assault rifle builder to build an extra one so assault rifles looks pretty handy a little bit of a ranged healer uh, we'll go ahead and pick up pistols see what pistols is like Alright, so the resource builder is the business. Single target attack that hits three times, so it's another burst. Then 
the dump is shoot out, consumes all the resources, a channeled focus attack. So basically, it's a cast timer one. And it looks like for the pistol abilities, we have Magnum the business causes the target to become weakened. And over here in the other tree, we have Hothead. Whenever you apply Hindered, you gain a critical effect chance above the law. Builds a resource with the equipped weapon and a persistent GTAOE. Actually, not too sure what that one is. I've never seen that. Oh, it just gave me a little bit of a heads up over there. I passed it see what that does. Ah, okay. Interesting. So that seems to be a, uh, a targeted, ground targeted area of effect that puts a dot on everything in there. Shotguns we're actually going to go ahead and skip because you find out about shotguns when you go through the little um, cutscene questing on the way over here. Now here are the melee weapons. I'm going to go ahead and try the hammer first. And we're going to re-equip everything again. Smash, builds a resource, held play, consumes all resources, and a blast attack in a column. This time the resources are actually down here because it's a melee weapon. Interesting little cone attack there. And of course the leftover uh, other ability won't fire because I'm not using it. Let's go ahead and take a look at fists. Okay, my resource builder is Claw. And my dump is going to be hog wild, consumes all the resources, a, another blast, gives you the savage sweep effect, causing the next five fist, excuse me, causing the next fist resource consumer to activate and deal five physical damage around you. Kind of makes me want to say Berserker Barrage. Alright, so I've gone Blades and Blood before. I think what I'm going to do is mix it up a little bit this time. And I'm going to go with Assault Rifles. And go ahead and equip all the stuff. So I can complete the quest. And we'll go ahead and spend a little bit of points in this. So we'll go ahead and buy Anima Shot. So that I have a little bit of a heal here. And we'll also get this as a passive. 
Now you can see down here your actives, which are your abilities that you can trigger at will, will appear on the left and passives appear over here. You can only run seven at a time. Seven of each. You can't break that, unfortunately. So over here for the assault rifle, we'll go ahead and grab one of the damaged ones. And we'll just leave it at that for now. Let's see what anima shot looks like. It looks like it applies a debuff on it. Explosive rounds. Alright, so now that we have the weapon equipped, we can just go back this is the company line. You will use it to maintain and talk to him. Field. Do you understand? That is all. Now I could swear I should be able to get another one while I'm here. Grab the elemental focus. Oh, we gotta equip everything again. Okay, it's actually reset everything, so that doesn't seem to be the way to walk out of here with both. I'm going to go back and uh, grab the assault rifle and walk out with this one. Perhaps the ability to get magic will be uh, coming along a little bit later. get the points back again. Go ahead and rebuy Anima Shot. And we'll get the Anima Boost. And we'll dump the one point in damage. Alright, let's go ahead and leave with the Assault Rifle skill and we'll go from there. And we'll go ahead and pause it until the next interesting thing that I come across. You love old school hip hop, don't you? <laughs> Projecting indecision is a big no-no. Always smile. But this isn't another test. We don't do probation. You're either in or you're out. The Illuminati are very achievement focused. It's like Xbox, only everything is hardcore. The ethic I really want to instill in you is to aim high and I'll achieve even higher. talk about Xbox higher. a while. It's not just in your best interest, it reflects on me too, and that is super important. Make me look bad, I'll mount your head on my wall as an object lesson to the next fuck up. God, it is so cute when you new guys think I'm kidding. Solomon Island. A little town and a preppy school with connections to us have kind of vanished off the coast of Maine. The people aren't a major deal. Do you know how many disappearances there are in the United States every year? We do. But our noses need to be totally clean on this one. The military are involved, and we have limited bandwidth to stall the shit heels at the DOD. Give an old dude a red button to press, it's like Viagra to them. I want you out on Solomon Island to assess the impact on our bottom line. You can skip the traffic in the quarantine by traveling through Agartha. Just use your initiative, but not too much initiative that comes across as desperate. Ciao, ciao. I love the cutscenes in this game. I love the humor. I love the conversations. Uh, I absolutely love the dialogue that you go through. Um, here's an example of what it's like to talk to somebody after a cutscene's over. The New York over. tunnels have been around longer than the city. When the Illuminati moved here, we hustled an architect over from Germany to do the sacred geometry of this place. Alright, so let's go ahead and get over to Agartha. 
Agartha is basically a mystic subway. It's going to take us to our next area. If I can actually find the thing. I think it's this way. No, uh, but I could be wrong. That is one thing that's a little bit rough about this game. Sometimes when you have these multi-tiered maps, it is a little hard to find your way around. See, because it looks like I'm in the right area, but I'm not. The map isn't exactly the most helpful thing either. Oh, here it is. And now I feel stupid. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sprint through this area over here. There might have been a lore object. No. Nope. There it is. That's the one I was looking for. So as you can see, something's going on over here because you have shrubbery in the bottom of a building. Full service. It's running somewhat tardy. By my watch, it's. One hundred years overdue at quarter past the hour. Judging from the cut of you, you're thing is basically a like traveler. the subway to Hogwarts well, meets to right Clive place. Barker. Now, this underground realm, like the great British rail system, is the very model of efficiency. Agatha's thoroughfares sprout from the tree of life and connect back to the surface. Distance and time bend in here. Why, you can cross the globe in a brisk walk. Of course, it's perfectly safe. And no one's entirely sure how it works. Quite bedeviled, the science boffins. But I'm assured they have their top men on it. Top men. So who's going to be watching I after him? One of these. Top men. Mind your fingers. Thank you. Fascinating devices. Fortunately, there's still enough to hand out like sweets. Consider it your anchor to the hollow earth. It can return you here in a flash, proverbially and quite literally. Well then, onwards to the New England coast, what? So here is Agartha. Basically, it is a set of tree roots that allows you to connect uh, with all these portals. Trippy. And here's another lore object. And we are at the portal to Kingsmith Town, which is the first major questing area. And uh, if you take a look at the Two Dudes Play video that I've got on my channel, that takes place in Kingsmith. And this scene right here is always why I call this particular game Silent Hill, the MMO. This just reminds me so much of Silent Hill 2. I, I think this is pretty much a very identical vehicle to the one that uh, the main character drives into Silent Hill, but I could be wrong. So, hope you enjoyed this particular video. This one dealt with the end of the New York City stuff. Uh, and we will now be in the major questing area for the Illuminati. At least their uh, level 1, 2, and 3 questing area, basically. You can get some level 3 gear here. Uh, mostly 2s and 1s. And this is pretty much the starter zone. And, uh... There's several other videos on YouTube that show a lot of the questing in this particular area. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the weapons of 
the secret world, from the range to the magic to the um, the melee weapons. And I'm not exactly too sure how to get back to the point where you can run two particular items. I was running both um, magic and blades at the time. Maybe a quest will give me the item. But uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want as long as you have the gun or the melee weapon or the focus for the magic. You can just equip it and then start dumping points into it. So you could go assault rifles and pistols if you wanted to, or you could go uh, blades and elementalism. It, it's pretty much up to you. It's just all a matter of where you want to spend your points. So take a look at the game when it comes out. It's by EA and Funcom. It'll be out in the beginning of July. Uh, it will be a purchase of the game. It'll be a subscription to the game on the cost of WoW and Swoter. Uh, hopefully it'll come down. Is this game tempting at the cost price that it is? It's close. Uh, it's a very, very different experience uh, uh, from World of Warcraft and things like Rift and Aeon and, you know, all the games like that. And uh, basically, I think I, I did pay for Swoter for a little while until the horrendous customer service experience. And I just got tired of just so many heroic quote-unquote groups that you had to do you know the level twos the level fours it just got old to try to level alone it felt very grindy and everything this game i might do it i might run this particular game aside wow and pay for both costs i have to decide yet but uh we'll see when the game comes out hope you enjoy <laughs> 